two of the biggest talents in the world of chess are clashing against each other. It's Gukesh, you can see on your screen, just 17 years of age. And he is taking on none other than Alireza Firuja, who's making his way to the table. Alireza, born in 2003, is just 20 years old. And this is already his second uh, candidates, which is just insane. Gukesh, meanwhile, born in 2006, is just 17 years old. And often I think, wow, isn't that simply amazing? If Gukesh went to a pub here, he won't be allowed in Toronto. <laughs> That's how young he is. But if he manages to win the candidates and then the World Championship match later this year, he would become a World Champion at the age of 18. That would be the youngest in the sport. That's how, on the That's cusp of is. greatness, Gukesh is. And off we go. Alireza opens with one d4 here. And what is Gukesh's first move going to be? He plays his knight out to f6. Will Alireza go for main lines? No, he goes for the London system. Whoa! Wow, that's going to be exciting. The London system on the board. And how is Gukesh going to meet it? He plays d5. This will be very interesting to learn from because generally players come well prepared in the candidates and they would have also looked at the London system carefully. So how is Gukesh going to meet it? And how is Ali Reza going to fight for the full point? Pawn to c5 played by Gukesh. Now, white can try and play d takes c5, win a pawn, but also you can be very solid with c3. He goes knight to f3 here, Ali Reza. And because he has not played c3, maybe it's an interesting idea to go and attack this pawn on b2. But Gukesh goes very solid and simple. He says, I'm going to play e6. He closes in his bishop, but he opens this bishop up. Overall, this is a much more solid approach to the game. Knight goes to d2. And now Gukesh plays his queen to b6. And with this, he puts pressure on the b2 pawn, which Alireza has to figure how to defend. He does so with rook b1. And now Gukesh has to decide about his development of the knight and the bishop. But first, he decides to clarify the situation in the center with c takes d4. And maybe next move, uh, e takes d4 is very likely now uh, by Alireza, who's thinking a bit. Maybe he's wondering if he could take with the knight. No, he takes with the pawn. And now, there's this very interesting idea which Gukesh is going for, which is bishop d7. He wants to put his bishop here to b5. This reminds me of the line in the French where many times in advanced French, black goes for bishop d7, bishop b5 concept. So here Ali Reza plays c3 and now Gukesh can actually go to b5 which he does and trade off the bishops. Very interesting uh, position on our board and we'll see how this continues. h4 is a very logical move by Ali Reza. At first it might seem a bit outrageous but if you think about it, if black takes here, white wants to take with the king and put the king on g1 by castling. You know, it's like castling by hand. And then the rook can get activated from here, like how Ali Reza is doing it, rook h3. Very, very interesting stuff uh, going on in this game between two youngsters. They are naturally so, so motivated, inspired and ambitious that they are playing this very, very differently. Bishop e7, played by Gukesh and Ali Reza goes h5. So Ali Reza wants to push his pawn to h6 and create dark square weaknesses. And Gukesh will want to prevent that and which is why he plays pawn up to h6, stopping that pawn from advancing. And now you can go rook g3 later, but you have to care about your h5 pawn. So first, Ali Reza pushes the bishop away and says, please take it, take on f1. And I think Gukesh is going to just do that. He'll take on f1. Yes. Bishop takes on f1 and now the king takes back on f1. You will slowly put your king back on g1. That is the plan. 
and now black castles it out so very interesting uh, play by gukesh and for the time being he's put his king there thinking that there won't be any attack but this you know this structure this is very common in the ruy lopez actually ali reza plays king g1 not sorry not ruy lopez in caro khan caro khan uh, it's very common and it leads to sometimes very dangerous attacks now gukesh goes queen c6 he keeps an eye on this pawn here a4 maybe he wants to go a6 b5 b4 which is the minority attack and ali reza brings in his knight this is a logical move because with this his queen now defends the pawn on h5 gukesh takes the knight and i think you can take with the bishop also the pawn ali reza being very ambitious takes it with the pawn and gukesh now has to move his knight away and he does so knight d7 <coughs> now think about it rook g3 queen g4 bishop here all these pieces in the attack that's going to be a massive attack there rook g3 already coming in threatening bishop at 6 has gukesh gone wrong or has he assessed the dangers well well gukesh is saying you know what ali reza i'm just going to tuck my king in put my rook here and i'm just going to say to you by the way a5 played by ali reza and i'm just going to say that minimalistically i'm going to defend with two of my pieces and my remaining pieces will play on the other side so queen c7 keeping an eye here and on a5 pawn ali reza says take the a5 pawn if you want gukesh i am i'm daring you to do so and gukesh snatches it now if by the way there could be this way of playing king h7 check king h8 and a draw can happen but i'm sure that ali reza doesn't want a draw he pushes his pawn to c4 and he is saying to gukesh you know i will find compensation for this pawn i will do it gukesh calmly puts his rook here on g8 and he's ready if ali reza wants to take then maybe trade queens and play this position which is fine for black ali reza of course doesn't want to trade queens he goes rook a1 attacks the queen the queen has to move now queen b4 attacking this pawn also looking this way now you can't take any more the bishop would fall so gukesh now is clearly better and ali reza has to play b3 but you can see gukesh getting the feel here he has 21 minutes on the clock ali reza has just 12 minutes so gukesh is slowly taking over this game he comes knight c5 he wants to come to e4 next he's attacking the b3 pawn ali reza low on time has 18 moves to make also is a pawn down this is not looking good for him maybe staring at his fourth defeat here knight to d4 and gukesh jumps in with his knight to e4 what a beautiful knight all of a sudden black's at white's attack is gone black's pieces are coming up rook e3 played here and now it's time for the rooks to enter the game maybe here maybe here where does he play he plays his queen to c5 that's a nice move again keeping an eye on the knight on d4 ali reza wants to bring the rook in yes he play, brings his rook and maybe he's threatening to take here on d5 but maybe gukesh can just bring his rook to c8 that's a nice little move well he plays rook d8 wow that's an interesting one because if you take here now gukesh will take with the queen defending and also attacking so ali reza pushes with b4 again such a sharp move because you can take this i think gukesh takes it queen b4 and ali reza's point is that if you take now here he wants to take back and maybe swing his rook over and attack this so this was maybe his idea of playing this so he takes on d5 and now gukesh must either take here but there's also some sacrifices in the air and gukesh spots it he gives knight takes f2 what a move what a move he sacrificed his knight ali reza picks it up and tells gukesh i didn't understand why did you give me this well that's because this is pinned now here and if you play rook d3 i'm just going to double 
So Alireza has to decide how to defend. He goes upwards, rook e4. But can we just not play rook d8 now, just attacking this way? Gukesh, is he bringing his rook there? Yes, he does. Rook a d8 and you're threatening to win the knight. So the bishop has to drop back. That's the only way. He drops it back. And now will Gukesh attack it even further with another piece joining in? And then there's no way to defend it seems. Bishop c5. Yes, he wants to move the bishop. He has 10 minutes. Ali Reza has only 2 minutes 30 seconds. Ali Reza has to make 10 more moves. He's still writing his moves. Why is he doing that? This knight is falling. There's only one defensive move that Ali Reza needs to find. Can he find it? He finds it. Beautiful move. And the point is if you take here, take here, you lose the queen. But then you pick this up and you're winning. You're better. So cannot take there on d4 and you can see Gukesh being flustered he hadn't seen queen b3 as a move after four minutes of thought he takes it Ali Reza takes it back instantly well the position is not really spoiled but I think what has happened here is that Gukesh thought he would win the game he would win the piece and Ali Reza would have to resign but now he's resisting the ensuing position is equal but Ali Reza has the momentum on his side. He has 1 minute 8 seconds. Gukesh has 2 minutes 33. It's important now to push forward the pawn. He pushes it further. A4. Ali Reza moves in with his knight. Time is running low. 2 minutes for Gukesh. 1 minute for Ali Reza. 5 moves to make. Rook A8. This is a nice move that has been played. Now Ali Reza can move in with his knight even further. Threatening a fork here. A check must be given. That is an important move to be found here. Or just start pushing the pawn and he plays king at 7 which is a mistake. This is not a good move by Gukesh. Because now maybe this is... What is knight b6? Already possible, right? Knight b6. Maybe he wants rook d2 check. King e1. Ali Reza has only 30 seconds left. He's thinking a bit too much. He needs to speed up otherwise he'll lose on time. There's no increment. Beautiful move found by Ali Reza. One of the best moves in the position. This is hanging and Gukesh now has only 20 seconds to decide what to do. There's no way to defend f7 somehow. If you go king g8 here, then knight b6 fork. So that's the reason why he pushes the pawn. Ali Reza chops it off. On f7 is the pawn queening now on a2. Well, he goes king h8 because there was a knight f6 check threat. And so he goes to h8. Ali Reza plays knight f8, pawn push and comes a check and rook g7 is a mate. There you see Gukesh has blundered it and he has lost anyway the position was difficult with no time on the clock he resigns on 40th move and the pain and the agony oh my god look at Gukesh he's so upset what a game this was by all means an absolutely amazing game because Ali Reza was almost lost. Gukesh, if he would have won this game, would have taken the sole lead in the tournament. He would have moved to plus three. Instead, now he's back to plus one only. He's on four out of seven instead of being on five out of seven. And you can see the pain there on his face. Ali Reza, who was having a dismal tournament with this win, might find new wings for himself but that in the end the time pressure the no increment that uh, change of emotions where Ali Reza found the defensive move with queen b3 led to so many different things happening and you will never find Gukesh so upset as you can see here you know he's put his hand uh, hands on his head I think the last time we saw him this upset was in the Olympiad when he lost to Nodirbek Abdu Satarov this is how it was and Gukesh trying to come to the grips with reality. Ali Reza, of course, knows that he was a bit lucky in this victory. But then again, he took his chances. That move, Rook F3, which he found with just few seconds left on the clock, was absolutely amazing. The arbiter brings in the score sheet. If you know, there was no increment. So the, both the players had to uh, have um, were not writing down the moves at the end. So maybe Gukesh has to write down those moves or maybe he just has to sign. I don't know. The arbiter may write it down for now. Yeah, she's given him the score sheet to, to fill those final moves in. Gukesh, of course, uh, sits down. He's in no mood to do anything. His mind is at some other place. But, you know, life goes on.
after this maybe he has to go to the press conference after this he has to go back to his room after that he has to eat his food and all of this looks completely pointless to a chess player who is involved in that game and wants to win it but the quicker he comes out of it the better he can perform he is still in with a chance in this tournament he is half a point behind nepo and uh, nothing really has been lost we will reach the halfway mark now there you see gukesh filling in the score sheet he of course uh, is re reliving every moment um, as he fills in those moves that that he is writing down and now he gives the score sheet i think sometimes this this little act of writing the score sheet brings you back into the present moment and gukesh like a class act arranges his pieces this is something which he's been taught since a very young age to respect the game and that is what he's doing he's putting back the pieces it's his way of saying i'll fight again in the next game this one is over i'm moving on and he also sets it up for his opponent which is also very cool uh, takes his score sheet this is by the way the players when they are writing there are two layers of score sheet one where they write the other one is kind of the carbon copy where the moves are being uh, stored and then they can take back that copy for themselves if they not want it nowadays it's a little bit obsolete because all the games are there online and there you see a mark of respect to the chess board class act gukesh